Hey guys, thanks for joining today. It marks a huge, huge milestone in the Better Product Series. Today is number five. <laughs> okay, so it's not that huge. Huge for me, I'm excited about it. I've been learning a ton by, by making these videos. I hope that you've learned something or at least understood that the same struggles that you face, I faced a million times over. And so if you know anything about this series, you know that the goal is to make the product development process better. And so to do that, I spend much more time on the upfront part of the process. So the strategic thinking, framing really important problems, prototyping, experimenting, you know, making the whole process more efficient, more user-driven, more design-driven. If you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about all of that part of the process. That's where all of my energy goes into to those pieces. That's what I like to spend my time doing. If you are anything like me, you're the person in your company that's facilitating or organizing these design thinking sessions or these road mapping workshops or whatever they are, you're seeing people join and they're not as excited as you are. Or if they do join, they're uncertain about why they're there, they're not sure how they can contribute, and then if they do, sometimes, oftentimes, the ideas that they come up with are kind of boring or the crap that we've been talking about for months or years. And the hope and the goal was to come up with something new and innovative. It doesn't mean that innovative has to be sexy. It just has to be the new idea or the idea that's been pushed to the back burner that no one wants to tackle because it's too hairy or too, too much to think about. This week's Better Product video, actually, I want to talk about that. I want to put that on the table because I think I have four simple ideas that you can bring into these sessions so that you can get more out of the people that join. So you can make them feel safe to contribute and really kind of push boundaries. So we're talking about getting the people that are joining these sessions to be more prepared, more, more excited, so that ultimately they can produce better, more innovative ideas. So whenever we're facilitating sessions like these and preparing for it, the thing that we do up front is to make sure that everyone joining is in the right mindset. So one thing that we share at the beginning is something like this that says that it's our default as people, as humans, to anything that we're uncertain of, anything that's new, is to play it safe. In these sessions that are a half a day long, a day long, however long they are, we have speed on our side. And this is a chance, because of that, to take some more risks, to be a little bit more open-minded, to really kind of push those boundaries. Okay, so then the first thing I have for you to try is to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with each of the people that you're inviting to your session. But in order to make this work really well, make it as natural as possible. So don't schedule something on the calendar with a big agenda. Don't make it really formal. That's just gonna put their walls up anyway. Instead, just go and drop by their desk. Or if you're not in the same office, pick up the phone and call them, call them on Slack, whatever is most natural for you. And just ask them, you know, say like, hey, we're, we're doing this session together in a couple weeks. Thank you so much for joining. You know, I'm just curious, what do you know about this thing that we're working on? What's been your experience? What ideas have you had this whole time that you think might be pretty cool to try out that maybe others haven't really spent time thinking about? Where are you with this whole topic? Get them talking, just be a good listener because that's gonna immediately have them invested in the process and curious and it's gonna make them understand that their voice is going to be heard. Number two, as you're wrapping up that one-on-one -on -one with them, be respectful of their time by reminding them of the time commitment that you're asking them to make. Most people have the feeling that if they're invited into something, it's gonna drag on for hours and hours and hours, or that they're gonna be pulled back into follow-up sessions, or there's gonna be this long email chain that follows the process. Take them through the process, explain it to them. Tell them that it's a four-hour process, a two-day process. That's all you need from them. But if it's gonna work, you need them to come and be 100% committed. That way, they understand that's what's gonna be expected of them and they can make the decision right then and there that they're going to commit to it. Number three then is to make sure that everyone is as prepared as possible for the session. That's entirely on you. If you don't do this, what you can expect is probably what you've been experiencing is that people arrive and they're on their phones, they're not engaged, or they just generate these sort of really kind of lackluster, ordinary ideas. Most of the time when people do that is because they don't feel safe and they don't have enough information in order to really kind of push. So that's on you. Put everything that you can together. Obviously, I've been using video as much 
much as I can these days. I think video is really powerful. So if you can, instead of sending them a long deck, which they're not gonna read, or even a long email, which they're probably just gonna delete, instead, maybe you can generate like a two minute video just saying, hey, this is what we're, we're gonna be getting together to talk about. And then on top of it, just share with them some additional reading and research that they can do and make it as painless as possible to go through it. So if you have any kind of competitive research that you've done or things about your users, share that with them. Make sure that they have that foundation so that they, when they step into the room, they know what they're there to talk about, they know why they're being invited into it, and they're ready to start working on the problem. Okay, and the last idea, number four, is to set the expectation for what you're trying to accomplish. So too many times, people that join these sessions have the expectation that they have to solve everything, that they have to have the finished answer, the finished result, they have to prove the thing, the idea that they had in mind this entire time. That's not at all what this is about. The only thing that this is about, these kinds of process, is to learn. So if you set that expectation that, hey, we're here to learn, this is a chance to experiment, then their walls will come down again and they'll be willing to experiment and push and test and be a little less safe with their ideas, right? So those are the four things. Meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, make sure you're respectful of their time and, and explaining to them what the process is going to be like and how much time you'll, will take from them. Make sure they're prepared and then set your expectation for the group that you're all there to learn. Four things that I think will help to get the people that are joining your sessions more excited, more engaged, and overall feeling a little bit more safe and willing to experiment and be more open-minded. Take care.